Okay, I think we can go ahead and start. Welcome everyone to the second wellness web chat. Before we get into it, I want to hand over to Mary Heim to start us off in prayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Nicole. Let us remember that we're in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was there right with you. Never did I leave you. I was your strength, your peace of mind, all that you hoped you could be. And though perhaps it's hard for you to understand, all you need to know for now is that I was always there. I was there right with you. Never did I leave you. You trusted me to be for you the song of courage that you were needing. And though the mystery is hard for you to grasp or understand, all you need to know for now is that I was always there. I will be with you always. You will have nothing to fear. I will love you, protect you, and keep you. Mother Bernarda, pray for us. Hail Holy Cross, our only hope. Saint Jean Baptiste de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Mary. So once again, welcome everyone. I know that some people are still joining or maybe some people are struggling to join and we will post the recording. It will be available afterwards. So for those of you that may have seen me before or for those of you that haven't yet, my name is Nicole Skatemarker and I'm the current head of wellness while Charlene Vessels is on maternity leave. And I'll be presenting this week's wellness web chat that is focused on lockdown loss. I'm joined by a panel, which is Viviana, Marlies, and Sister Cheryl Ann. They are educational psychologists, the first two, and our social worker, Sister Cheryl Ann, who presented two weeks ago on returning to school. They will be assisting me with today's discussion. So just a little bit of admin. So I will start our presentation and then I will open up for a discussion. What I would like you to do is if you have any questions, please can you use the Zoom group chat function and you can message on there. When we are done with the presentation, I will open up the discussion to the panel and we will answer your questions as best as possible. Before I get to it, I know that there's a lot going on beyond just lockdown lots. There's a lot that the school is busy dealing with and working with at the moment. Many of you are aware of the racism and the accusations that have been made on social media. The school has employed an independent transformation team to assist with this and there's ongoing process happening. If you have questions about this, if you're concerned about this, if you wanna raise issues about this, please email transformation at dlshcch.co.za. I will post this in the group chat so you can also just see the email address. This session will be focused on loss, on what we've lost during lockdown, during COVID, how to cope with that, how parents can cope with that, and how that will filter down to the kids. If you have questions about logistics or other issues, I'm going to ask you to rather email the school. You can email the helpline. There are numerous avenues that you can follow. This, we're gonna focus on lockdown loss. So, let me show, 
continue with the presentation then. All right. As you may know, this webinar series is focused on the overall wellness and well being of our children. And we are focusing specifically on the transition from lockdown to the return of school and adjusting to the new normal. COVID-19 has brought loss into all of our lives. Even if we have been fortunate enough not to lose someone, we are all dealing with loss of some kind. This presentation will discuss how to cope and manage overwhelming feelings for you and your child. We will look at ways of adapting to these changes and coping with what we've lost. Coping with the loss of someone or something you love is one of life's biggest challenges. You may associate grief with the death of a loved one, which is often the cause of the most intense type of grief. But any loss can cause grief, including job loss, divorce, loss of financial stability, loss of health, of freedom, of friendships, loss of safety, and the loss of life as we know it. During this pandemic, during this lockdown, we've lost birthday celebrations, derby festivals, de different camps, milestones, dances. We've lost connections. We're no longer able to hug people. We no longer can cry on a real shoulder. We've lost time, money, work. We've lost routine and we've lost spontaneity. We've lost opportunities. And we've lost life without the permanent anxiety and fear and uncertainty that we're currently living with. Whatever your loss, it's personal to you. So don't feel ashamed about how you feel or believe that it's somehow only appropriate to grieve a certain way when for certain things. There are myths about dealing with loss, about the grieving process. For example, don't cry about it or just ignore your feelings and they'll go away or just be strong and, and move on. But the facts are ignoring your pain will only make it worse in the long run. Crying is normal and a healthy response to sadness. There is no right or wrong way to grieve or to feel your feelings. So, how can we cope with what we've lost? Let's first think what parents can do. In order for children to manage their anxieties, parents have to first manage their own. Think about the pilot of a plane. If he or she is nervous, then the whole plane is going to be nervous, from the cabin crew to the passengers. But if the pilot is calm, then it filters down to the cabin crew and the passengers. Parents are the pilots of their families. Parents have to try to be calm and manage their anxieties and worries and stresses, and this filters down to the rest of the family. In only a few months, life has been turned upside down. Many things have changed overnight. Many of the people we rely on have become distanced from us or are only available on our phone or computer screens. So how do we find ways forward in these unprecedented times? Talk to your child. Acknowledge the difficulties and challenges the family is facing in an age appropriate way. Children know when things are not so right. And instead of trying to tell them that they're wrong or they shouldn't worry, Acknowledge, it's normal to worry, it's okay to worry. Take time to look after yourself. Look after your mental, emotional and physical health. If you're calm, it'll help your child stay calm. So practice self-care. Find time in your day to do things that make you feel good. Whether it's a nice warm bath, reading a book, watching a movie, take time to look after yourself and it will really impact your family. Routine, structure, and consistency is very important. Try to organize things and organize time. For example, 
all right, in the mornings, we're going to do this as a family. Later in the day, we're going to be doing things on our own. And try to keep to a routine, as this helps children a lot. Find spaces to offload and take a break. Find people you can talk to, whether it's a partner, friends, a therapist, so that your anxieties aren't taken out on your kids. And if lockdown has taught us one thing in particular, is that we need to slow down. As we transition from each level, we pick up more anxieties, things become more fast paced. And it's important to remember to slow down. We can only take one day at a time. So what are some of the ways that we can cope, all of us, from parents to kids to staff members? During these uncertain times, we need to take time to adapt. We need to try to be flexible. Rigidity will cause more anxiety. It's important to support yourself emotionally by taking care of yourself physically. Remember, it's okay not to be okay. We are in a crisis. Many people are in survival mode. It's okay to be struggling and not to cope. We are all dealing with COVID-19. This is affecting everyone on this planet. It breaches race, gender, religion, sexuality. Everyone right now is struggling with COVID-19. It is a crisis. It's okay to not be okay. Remember, feelings come in waves. Acknowledge them. Don't judge them or ignore them or try and avoid them. If you're feeling anxious, lonely, scared, overwhelmed, it's understandable. It's all right. These feelings will be there, but we don't need to let them control us. Another way that you can cope is to mourn symbolically for what you've lost. So for example, doing something to acknowledge what you've lost. For example, you know, the matrix can dress up in their nice outfits that they were going to wear to the matric dance and do a photo shoot or use Zoom or another app to have a celebration. We have to try and be creative to find ways to mourn what we've lost and say, you know, it sucks that we can't do those things anymore. We need to connect. And you've heard this message before. There are so many online platforms for us to use to connect whether it's Zoom, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, House Party, there are a lot of ways to connect and it's important for us to try and maintain connections. Even though we are separated, we need to still be united. And then it's important to also reflect on the past and look forward to the future. Although we've lost a lot, we've also gained in some areas. We've had the chance to spend more time with family and we've develop new ways of learning and connecting. We've learned to be adaptable, resilient, creative. We know that we are dealing with a new normal, but we also know that we have things to look forward to in the future. It won't always be like this. We will eventually be able to hug our friends. We will eventually be able to have birthday celebrations. If you are not coping, we do have spaces and resources available. If you're part of the junior school, please reach out to the helpline or part of the high school, reach out to the high school helpline. You can contact me for the wellness team. That's my email address. And I can put you in contact with Viviana, Marlies, or Sister Cheryl Ann, who are also part of the team. If you don't feel comfortable, if you're not able to contact us, can reach out to your child's teacher or grade facilitator, and they can also assist you in the referral process. Please don't sit in silence. Please reach out. I will now be going back to our main screen and we can open up a discussion. So, if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts or comments, please use the chat function and we will, as a panel, discuss the different questions that you may have.
things seem rather quiet on the chat function. And I actually would like to open up to the panel um, if they have any comments about lockdown loss, if there's anything maybe that they also feel like we should share with, with the participants in today's meeting, anything that's come to mind while I was talking that I maybe forgot to mention. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Nicole. I think that was such a relevant um, presentation that you've just um, given us. I think what we are really trying to communicate and to grapple with is something so, so real for every single one of us. Um, so I know this might be actually a very difficult topic to engage with. Um, and in fact, it might be quite difficult to even open up um, on this kind of platform, but just to recognize that, you know, if there are any comments, any questions, um, we are here to facilitate. I do see that um, we have one question come through. Um, okay, so the question is, we are using social media and devices to stay connected, but how much is too much screen time for kids? We feel guilty, they don't see their friends, but at the same time, um, they need to be restricted. And I think these social interactions have really come to the fore. Um, how do we allow them to still be in, in touch and how do we allow them to still engage, but at the same time realize that with different developmental age groups, um, social media is, um, it is a challenge. Um, and in fact, some maturity emotional maturity, as well as cognitive maturity, needs to um, be facilitated and supervised as well at the same time. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the panel would like to contribute. Yes, maybe I can come in. I see um, Kathy Wondrum has also said that the loss in variety of activities, um, obviously that's going to happen. I mean, we've got no sport. Um, there's nothing for children to connect. It's very, very hard for them. I was um, in class today and I spoke to some of the great sixes and they were saying to me, one of the hardest thing is not having their sport. So um, that connection and all of that thing. So you need to replace it with screen time. I think it's difficult being a parent. I just take my hat off to all of you. Um, but I think, um, Creative family time is, is, is a good idea. Bring back old board games, um, um, activities in the garden. I had children that designed their own um, tracks on bikes. I had children building tree houses again. I had children building tents in homes like we used to do when there were no television. So I think it's, it's, it's very difficult, but it is good. Depend also what age the child is to create some um, intervention time without being on screen. Yes, I think we really have to be creative. It's, it's, it is difficult. And like Marli said, to really acknowledge the difficulty that parents are facing now. And, you know, I kind of get the feeling that parents are looking for a checklist like okay screen time four hours then i'm a good parent if it's five hours i'm a bad parent and and we really need to move away from that kind of thinking um you are doing what you can and what you're doing is good enough and some days there's going to be a lot of screen time other days you're going to be finding creative ways to spend time as a family and that's what you really need to hold on to and to not judge yourself for you know, not being a good enough parent. The fact that you're listening to this wellness web chat shows that you care about your kids and you're trying your best. So I wanted to open up another question to the panel. Um, and this was, I, and I think a lot of parents are struggling with this. Is there a foolproof method to help parents not to lose their minds? Having kids in the house, having, the, having work, a full-time job, dealing with all of this. And I know everyone is struggling with this. And again, it feels like parents are looking for, okay, step one, step two, step three to not losing my mind. 
Unfortunately, it's not that easy. I wish I could give that to you. I wish I could wave my magic wand and they say, this is how we do it. Marlise, Viviana, Sister Shoan, do you have any thoughts? I suppose it's important to, to really hold on to um, why can't we lose our minds? And I think <laughs> it is okay. It is okay to have those moments as parents. We all go through it. Um, and so to be real and genuine and sincere um, in the way that we respond, I think is, is, is vital. Um, of course, sometimes we feel like we going to lose so much of our mind that we're going to need to repair and that can leave parents feeling very guilty at times. Um, I think it's just really being in tune with those feelings and just being in tune with what your authentic experience is. I think often modeling a way of coping, you know, is important and we only really know when to cope uh, when we're going through something difficult. So, I think to, to present again that authentic response is really important because it will help guide children through the process of what it feels to have these messy feelings, to have these big emotions, to feel the, you know, the losses, to you know, go through exactly what moms and dads are going through, but at the same time to model that we can come through this and we can repair what feels really too messy or too overwhelming. So it is, like, like you mentioned, Nicole, it is okay to lose your mind. And I wish there was a foolproof um, way of doing it. I think Nicole also presented some wonderful ways of coping in terms of um, self-care, reaching out, connecting. I think those are all wonderful strategies. Um, and I think acknowledging and just acknowledging what it is that we're losing our mind over is really important. It is okay. Um, Nicole, if I may come in, I also see um, there's a lot of parents that are concerned about sleeping patterns of children, um, which goes hangwire uh, uh, because of lockdown. And now we can go to bed later. Our sleeping patterns, or especially with the teenagers, sometimes they will go to bed very late and only get up. So. Uh, it's very important. I know how difficult it is to keep some planning um, as that dinner time stays at dinner time and that their homework time stays at homework time. And even if we can do something active, maybe, uh, you know, now that we can do exercise again, go for a jog or go for a walk or whatever, so that that extra energy burns off and try and keep, I would say, the organization there that we try and plan the day, and, but also get some activity going because that's the only way that children burn. They don't have the sport anymore to burn that energy. Um, then I also see there is um, someone that asked about, is this lockdown loss? Is it being discussed in class? Is anything about how the children feeling? And um, uh, uh, I don't know, Nicole, maybe you can um, speak for the um, high school, but in the junior school, in the LO classes, the LO classes are taken by us. So um, we, in our LO lessons, this is actually what we talk about, the experience of being locked down, now being back at school, the fears they are, um, the frustrations that are happening because one of the mums said, is it okay for my child to be extremely anxious and very angry at this time? Anger is nothing else but anxiety and fear that's been repressed and the frustration that comes out of all the worries. Uh, lots of the smaller kids really worry about their parents going back to work are they going to be okay? And they sit at school with us. And we all sit and look at each other with these masks on. So I told them today, for humankind, this is a new experience. Uh, we all sit with this fearfulness in us. But one thing that I know that the human being can adapt, the human being can um, overcome. Uh, and um, this is the message I think we need to send our kids, the positivity that we can overcome these things. Thanks, Marlies. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that children are very resilient. We've, they've been children throughout history, right? <laughs> um, throughout terrible times, world wars, throughout apartheid, through bubonic plagues. 
children have found ways to connect and to play. And I understand that everyone wants the best for their children. Absolutely. I've also seen that parents are asking, you know, can we present this in the classrooms? And we are making our presence aware in the classrooms. Like Marley said, in the junior school, they're talking about it in LO. And in the junior high, we've been presenting in the SEL lessons. And we have plans to address in the, to the grade 10s, 11, 12s as well. So we are making our presence known. Whether, and the children can, you know, approach us individually. Or we also go to the classrooms or present on an online platform. I just want to acknowledge, um, we, I know that parents want the best for their children. They want their to, as I said in the, in the previous presentation, all parents want their children to be safe and feel safe and feel secure. And we need to acknowledge as parents that we, we don't feel that. I mean, parents have, have been asking now about the mixed messages. I, I, I speak to my child about COVID and, and all of that, but then I send my child to school, so that's mixed messages. There is going to be a lot of anxiety. Parents are going to experience that anxiety about their children not um, being safe all the time, especially when the child is not around the parent. So we need to acknowledge that those feelings, that, that, that parents want their children to be safe. But we are in this situation where it is a new normal. And parenting as we know it has changed. So what's the best that you want for your child and the way you wanted it six months ago, it's totally changed. So we, we need to be creative, creative. It's creative in the way we speak to them, creative in the way we let them, you know, their energy, how they, they, they spend their energy creative in the way we structure the, the routines, but uh, that the, the routine and the co consistency, that needs to be there. Nicole spoke about the structure and the routine. Structure and routine creates predictability, and it also creates a sense of safety for the, for the child. So that is important in the child's life. Thank you, sister. I noticed that a, a few um, participants are just asking about the recordings, um, having either missed a bit of the um, beginning or missed the previous recordings. And I just like to let everyone know that they are available on the De La Salle Holy Cross College YouTube channel. So you can find the recordings there. I see there was another question um, about how, are there any actual concrete creative ways that we can help children process loss? Um, and I think this is a, 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 tough, a tough one to answer because we do want to give them the space to express. Um, and at the same time, we also want to be able to contain whatever does come out. Um, what I, what I found really helpful on a concrete level, perhaps with the little ones, and maybe even with the older ones, is um, the idea of perhaps of like a time capsule. Um, something that can hold the things that we've, that we've lost. Something that we can actively reflect on. With the little ones, having something concrete um, really does solidify what it is that they are mourning or grieving. So, um, if it's, you know, if something in the box that goes in there would be a, a photograph of, of their friends or whatever it is. I know it, it sounds, it sounds really tough because it's, it's not quite like you quite lost someone as in someone died, but it just feels that it, it, it's really, really solid. So making a memory box per se or a time capsule, that could maybe be a creative way of of helping the younger ones um, during this time. Um, yeah, I think I think just to keep it quite concrete for the little ones, um, to also help them think about other times they may have experienced something similar, and um, to help them be insightful about their resilience and how they got through that and, and what made it better, I think sometimes really helps as well. 
and you know for the older ones things like writing a letter um and they can and they you know to their past self or to their future self and really you know talk about the things that they've lost and then they can even you know at the end like they can either put that letter somewhere safe or they can burn the letter and send that off into the universe and like that really symbolically mourning something significant that's been lost lighting a candle or blowing up a balloon and letting it go you know it's kind of symbolizing letting go what we've lost in lockdown and then also kind of doing more concrete things like making a collage of like your hopes for the future because we know that you know the future is still happening like it's still we're still going to be able to do the things that we love it's just right now things are very different I can see there is so much resourcefulness coming out in the in the chat, and um, I think it's wonderful if we can connect with that. You know, teaching our children about emotions now is it, it's it's huge um, because if we can help them reflect that we have emotions, that they have emotions, they will feel a lot more validated and acknowledged. So I think the resourcefulness that is coming out in the chat is really um, quite encouraging. Um, I would really, really want to sort of expand on that in the next in the next session that we do do, um, and that would be around sort of helping children emotionally regulate. But we can go into that as we go along. But I think this resourcefulness that is coming out is really very really positive. Yes, I think it, it ties very nicely in with with your presentation, Viviana, that will take place in two weeks time, our third wellness web chat, which is on managing emotions, regulating emotions. Um, and I, I can see that the parents are, are hungry for information. I'm just reading some of the comments here. I also may say it, it's, it's not just uh, the parents that are hungry for information. I'm so glad they also noticed this and all the wonderfulness that they send us, how you can connect and what you can look at. Thank you so much. It shows us you participating with us. Um, but it is uh, the, the children in class are hungry to talk about their feelings. They talk about uh, they need what frustrates them and what is not OK and actually what scares them. Uh, with the younger ones, we still need to give them a little bit of emotional language because, but they can do it through drawing and various ways. But once again, I think Viviana, you're going to touch on that in, um, in two weeks time, which is going to be great. I see there's a, a comment and a question here from a parent. Um, revolving around the different responsibilities that parents have at the moment and in addition to working and being a parent now you're also having to be a teacher and you're having to adapt to all these new technologies and the question is you know are we as parents being selfish to want them to go back to school when perhaps we should be investing more in the home learning program through webinars for parents to understand the technologies and methodologies being used Marlies, Vivian, I'm sure you have thoughts and I have thoughts as well, but I, I kind of want to let you go first. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to go, Marlies. Okay. Um, I mean, I think this is really just the essence of what we've been chatting about. And it's it's so true we were moms and dads dropping our kids of school and trusting that the system they were in the school that they were in um you know was facilitating all the learning and we had this almost you know real reassurance that everything was actually going okay and now not only are we sitting with that responsibility in our hands um in a very sort of real way are they doing enough is it okay am i managing this i feel like we are in constant power dynamics. Um, it almost seems to you we've lost some of the essence of what it is to, to be their parent beyond being their teacher. And um, so I think that is a very big loss. 
on top of it, we've all had to extend out of our comfort zones. Um, we've all, and I think the teachers as well as parents can relate on this, is that we've all had wonderful paradigms in which we've used to teach and we've used to learn. And now we're having to sort of engage in this technology that is way beyond us. Some other kids get it. They, <laughs> they seem to be naturals at, um, at this tech thing um, and they can teach us a lesson or two. But for us, it's, it's definitely pushed us beyond our limits and, and extended us. I think the remarkable thing is, and, and I think this is what Nicole um, presented as well, is in every way that we've been extended, in every loss that we've had, and I, th I think this is the, can be the conflicting um, element of loss, is that we gain something else. Um, so we, in these situations, we might be gaining new skills. We might be um, finding this empowering confidence that we didn't know we had by being stuck in our little ways of being um, and now sort of expanding that um, so I think with everything is coupled something and and this can make grief and loss a little bit more um, challenging is because, and, and especially for our children because sometimes they're grappling with two conflicting emotions it's this loss but yet maybe excitement or um, the sense of sadness, but maybe anticipation for what's coming next. Um, so these these multi-layered feelings can be also very well overwhelming for us as parents, as well as the kids. Sorry, I seem to have chatted away there. Um, I hope I addressed I addressed the question and acknowledged what everyone is feeling around the sort of many roles that parents are having to carry right now. And, and almost the contrasting feelings, you know, I want safety for my child, but sure, I also want them to go back to school because having them at home all the time is driving me dilly. Yes. And, you know, it's okay to have those feelings. Yeah. You know, Viviana, you also touched on something that I think it's also important to mention around the multi-layered feelings and dealing, feeling the sense of loss and grief around the things that we've lost during lockdown, as well as anticipation and excitement around other things. I think we also need to mention that this lockdown loss that we're dealing with may also evoke other feelings around previous losses or reactivate or amplify other feelings. If you know children have lost a loved one or if they have had other losses like moving schools or losing friendships and that, those might be activated in these times right now. And that's when we really need to think about the complexity of the feelings that all of us are experiencing. We also need to think that, you know, the lockdown loss may activate some underlying issues. So if you have quite an anxious child, this transition to level three and the new normal may amplify those anxieties. Your child struggles with sadness or loneliness. These might be amplified and activated during this time. And I think that, sorry, I think that goes right back to um, sort of looking out for those red flags of what our children could be experiencing. Um, and what, at what level are they experiencing? Um, is this something that just has that flavor that is a little bit, you know, out of our grasp and then maybe we need to call out for help? Um, you know, an anxious child that perhaps already was holding onto a lot of fear prior to, to lockdown, prior to this, um, who's now having to navigate a very different world, um, that, that's a child that we need to keep our eyes on and sort of um, monitor what, what could be happening there. Um, children that perhaps are new to the school, perhaps that have, um, they've just transitioned. Um, you know, children that perhaps have lost grandparents in, in recent years or recent months. Um, these are all really, these are, these are wounds that could um, potentially, you know, become quite raw for them. Or they could be, it could be activators where we can help them through um, their healing and, and really 
tackle it head on so that we process it um, in its entirety. I see two lovely suggestions um, coming up on the group chat. And the one is, you know, in a very creative way, if you've missed out on a holiday or a celebration of sorts, is to try and recreate that. So the example is, you know, if you were meant to have a beach holiday, have a beach day at home, whether it's in a sunny room or if you're able to use a garden space, you know, pack a picnic and have some fun in the sun. And I think that's a really lovely creative way of, of trying to um, still find joy, even though we're living in such uncertain times. The other suggestion is to, to block our time in the day and to connect with the family members. So no phones, no technology, um, and do something fun and creative, whether it's baking something delicious or painting or playing a game. I see that we still have 15 minutes left. So we still have time for some more questions or comments or thoughts, concerns before we start wrapping up. All right, maybe I can have some closing thoughts from the panel, just to wrap up. Um, at least Viviana, Sister Cheryl, and maybe you can just say if you'd like to go first and we can maybe just share our closing thoughts. Thanks, I'll go, Nicole, thank you. Um, um, just thank you to all the parents and everybody um supporting us in all of this i think it is new for all of us uh to get used to um the computer used to streaming online and teaching children in class i know for me it was certainly a huge learning curve um to get that all right and done so it is a lot of emotions flowing um and, and as i said to the children in class today it's the first time we all experience this kind of uh pandemic um and i don't want to dwell on it with the kids and i think one of the parents said yes please not i think they're over uh coronavirus and having to discuss that in class i think we need to see if we can have positivity and see how we can adjust uh express our feelings uh connect to our feelings what viviana is going to do um and then uh, just see how we as a human race and also as a family can move forward with what has happened to us so uh, yeah that's all for me thank you Um, I think I just want to close off. Um, I, th I think this has been a really um, beneficial conversation and um, I really do feel that what we've expressed around the layers of loss is, is so important. Um, but
but mostly around, again, like we all mentioned, the resiliency and adaptability that we do have within us. Um, and so I think when we look back, we've got a story to tell and um, a really, a really good story. And we've got a story to tell of loss, but also of um, what we've gained through this process. And we really do hope that we can. We, we're working hard with the little ones, with the kiddies in the junior school, especially at this moment. I know I can speak on behalf of my and I, on having those discussions in, you know, in the LO, in, you know, um, in the classrooms, um, and encouraging that conversation throughout where we can. You know, when it comes to the, the older ones and the teenagers, it's very difficult for them to express feelings and what they experience. So there's a, um, and I know Nicole, you mentioned that um, also keeping the physical distance is also quite difficult for children, I'm sure for the little ones as well. Um, but um, with regard to the expressing feelings, I think we're going to have to come up with really creative ways to get the, the teenagers to speak about what they're feeling, what they've lost, and to acknowledge that with that um, um, telling us what they've lost, they might there might be other feelings that come as well, feelings of anger because they've lost so much. So um, so as much as we want to live in hope and, and let them uh, know that they're part of history because they can look back and say we lived through this time and we were part of this time, we also, to, we also need to acknowledge that there is so much that they are experiencing and, and we need to find ways to, to tap into those feelings and find ways where they can share those feelings. So it, it means connecting with someone that they can trust and that they can feel safe, safe with where they can speak about what it is that, that's happening in their lives. Thank you. Yeah, I think to close, it's, it's, I want to reiterate what I said in my presentation that, you know, as parents, you are the, the pilots. And it's really important to take care of your own emotional, physical and mental health. And this will help then calm the kiddies or the teenagers. And really to, to look after yourselves and support your emotional and physical well-being. And this will trickle down to the children and to acknowledge things as a family, to acknowledge feelings as a family in an age appropriate way, to not try and avoid, ignore, or judge feelings because they're normal. And it's okay to be sad. You know, sadness and crying are healthy responses in the grieving process. Just a reminder, please, if you have more questions, concerns, or anything like that, you can email the helpline or you can email me directly. I've posted those email addresses in the chat. The recordings will be available on the YouTube channel. If you struggle to get hold of that, please email us and we will help you, assist you in getting hold of the recordings. I want to thank my panel so much. Thank you, Marlise, Viviana, Sister Show, Anne. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for all the hard work everyone has put in. Thank you for being here. So we're going to end there for today. And just a reminder, Viviana will be presenting in two weeks about managing feelings. And we've already spoken a little bit about that, but she'll continue the discussion in two weeks time. We'll provide more information for that in the next week. So for now, thank you everyone. Keep well and stay safe. Very nice.